is that uh, it will take place on the second Friday of each month that we sit. And there's a duration of 30 minutes for these series of questions to the Premier. The questions should, or the questions may be put to the Premier relative to required matters of national importance or on general performance of government ministries and government agencies, including a routine question about the Premier's engagements. The opposition leader has the ability to ask three questions. Any other member may ask one question, and only members who have put questions can ask supplementaries. The guideline is that the members who wish to ask questions should have informed the speaker before the start of this morning's sitting, so that the speaker would have, have a list of those intended members and questions. So if your name has not been provided to me before this morning, you know there's no need for you to get out of your seat during this period. Once we complete the 30 minutes for the Premier's questions, or if those who have indicated they wish to ask questions, if, we, if they uh, complete all the questions before the 30 minutes, we will then move on to the regular question period from statements that were given this morning. And out of courtesy, I'm going to allow the opposition leader to put her questions first, so the 30 minutes will begin now. Madam Opposition Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, I'm not going to ask about your engagement. I'm married. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Yes. Would the Premier advise the Honorable House of the status of the better deal that he promised to the people of Bermuda in advance of the 2017 general election in respect to the construction of the airport, and could he specify which terms and conditions were improved upon? Uh, good morning, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, I, I want to thank the Honorable Opposition Leader for her question. And what I would say is that the Honorable Opposition Leader, I'm sure, was paying attention when we gave a press conference on the report, uh, where we think we rolled out about 19 binders full of a contract that had, in the unspeakable terms, that it was unable to be varied. Now, every single other contract has abil ability to be varied, but not this one, Mr. Speaker. So given that that member was a member of the Cabinet that approved a contract that could not be altered, I'm sure that she could tell us how the people of this country can get that better deal. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Um, Officer Leader, would you like a supplementary or take, put your second question? No, this is a supplementary. Put your sec <laughs> supplementary. Will the, will the Premier accept that he has misled the public, either through ignorance and, and intentional deception, that the terms and agreement of this, with respect to the terms and agreement of this, this, this contract? Because as the Premier indicated, once he got and looked into it, he recognized that it wasn't what he understood. So he either didn't realize what was there or he misled the country. Mr. Premier. Mr. Speaker, I promised my colleagues that I'll be on my best behavior today. Well, <laughs> the Speaker would have it any, no other way. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do my best to remain on my best behavior, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. But I find it incredibly rich that a member of the former cabinet who came to Parliament, I believe, at 5 a.m., who did not provide 19 binders full of documents, oh would say that I misled the people by saying before the election that we'll be looking to change a deal that they wrote that could not be changed, Mr. Speaker. Again, that was what they locked the country into, Mr. Speaker. They locked the country into ever-increasing air rates. They locked the country into giving away our revenue. They locked the country into the fact that a Canadian company is getting revenue that should be going to our students and to our seniors, Mr. Speaker. That was their deal, but we are going to continue the work despite what they left us. Thank you, Premier. Um, Madam Leader, would you like Supp supplementary? Supplementary, supplementary. Second, this is your second supplementary, right, right. your last supplementary on this one, supplementary and then you have questions. As yes. I totally understood, and, and, and bear, bearing in mind that, that the, the, the Premier had what I call his, um, his preamble, I'm just going to say to him that perhaps 
he should have recognized that until he looked at it he didn't he didn't know what was in there but my other question was and he, and the, and the pre, my other supplementary and the premier went down the path so I'm going to go down it as well because the premier indicated about contracts etc since we've had the release of so much information, the 19 binders, etc., what I want to know is the Premier prepared to release the unredacted version of the PPP partnership for the Bermuda Hospitals Board that he promised that he would do. Thank you, Honorable Member. Premier? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will let the Honorable Opposition Leader know that I do not remember uh, the specific reference to what she said, but if she has said I have made a commitment, I am happy to keep that commitment, and I will be happy to do so, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Premier. You. Madam Opposition Leader, would you like to move on to your second question? Speak, speak to me, members. Mr. Members, Mr. I think we started this with the Premier indicating that everyone was going to be on their best behavior. And you know if you want, the Minister's going to speak and we'll show you the door. So if you want the door, you can take it now and let me show it to you in a bit. But I suggest everybody be on their good behavior in this uh, inaugural process because I'd like to see all of you still remain when it's finished. Thank you, Continue Mr. Speaker. On. Can the Premier give this House an update on the government discussion with the UK government regarding Brexit and its possible impact on Bermuda? Thank you, Premier. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I can confirm that there was a special joint ministerial council meeting that took place, um, I think, last month, uh, which was attended by the Deputy Premier um, for uh, various discussions on Brexit matters. And I will ask that a statement be prepared to share with the Honorable House on those particular matters. Thank you, Member. Um, Premier, would you like supplementary? Yes. Supplementary. Um, can the Premier advise this House on whether this matter was discussed recently at CARICOM? Premier? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I can say there was minimal discussion uh, regarding Brexit at CARICOM. What we spent our time discussing at CARICOM was how we could work with our Caribbean partners to assist um, what we are doing uh, with our work with the European Union, not specifically regarding Brexit. Um, as members would be aware, there is a European Union issue uh, that a lot of countries um, are undergoing, and the fact is that we felt that it could be um, advanced if more persons came together to secure higher level political meetings than would have been able to be secured by Bermuda itself. We don't need this, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Um, would you like your second supplementary or your third question? Oh, second supplementary. Continue. Although I, I appreciate what the Premier said, and I just want to find out, is there, are there any other takeaways from the CARICOM meeting that you would like to um, advise the House of? Premier? Well, Mr. Speaker, I am very happy that the Honorable uh, Opposition Leader is going to get, uh, allow me to invite or to share what took place at the CARICOM meeting, Mr. Speaker, because the meeting uh, was my first. Um, it was the first meeting uh, in 15 years that was attended by all 15 heads of government of the full CARICOM member states, and it was also attended by four associate heads. Bermuda had the opportunity to present um, its view on, uh, sorry, its progress on what we've been doing inside the fintech space, which formed part of the final communique insofar as that we will also assist our Caribbean neighbors in sharing our experience as there is enough to, uh, there is enough of this new economy to go around. Addition to that, Mr. Speaker, as I mentioned in my early response, there was a lot of specific discussion that dealt with uh, the EU, um, the European Union list of non-cooperative jurisdictions for tax purposes and how countries could work together in order to secure uh, more high-level political meetings. Uh, there was a plan that was uh, devised at the uh, summit. Uh, that plan will be worked, and I'm expected that we will not only assist um, our CARICOM partners with the information of which we have learned insofar as dealing with the EU, but what we will also do is that we will join with them in making sure that we can make our representation directly uh, to the heads of uh, government and or minister of finance throughout the European Union territories. And the final thing that I would say, Mr. Speaker, is that it, there, it was certainly recognized that Bermuda was back at CARICOM after a long period of absence. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Would you like to put a third question, Madam Opposite Leader? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to go local now. <laughs> go local. Um, can the Premier advise when the online payment system for payroll will become usable? Thank you. Premier? Um, I'm 
uncertain of the question, and she's talking about the e-tax system. The e-tax system itself has been online for a while. Um, I think the e-tax system has been online for probably about 10 years. If she's asking a question about the recent upgrades and changes which have had to take place, I do know that the Ministry of Finance has put out a notice uh, that the payroll tax will not be able to be filed until, I believe, July 30th. Uh, but those items are being worked through. So I'm happy for the, uh, if the uh, opposition leader would like to clarify the particular question which she has. But I think on a broader level, what we're looking to do is make sure that we bring more government services online. And I'm proud to state, I think that the Honorable uh, Minister of Education spoke about the fact of a young Mr. Jalea Richardson, who graduated with a dual enrollment degree um, from the Bermuda College, as well as the Barclay Institute. But in addition to that, I happened to meet this young man, Mr. Speaker, at the Barclay Institute commencement, and I'm pleased to report that he is currently working in the Cabinet Office delivering on the election promise to deliver a mobile app for the people of this country. We will make sure that government is more efficient, and we will make sure that Bermudians are the ones that are building it, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Supplementary? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, my, just of a clarification, it was the latter that I was acquiring in terms of the system not being usable, and I just wonder if the Premier would give an indication as what has been the impact on cash flow by this payroll tax system not being available to all of those persons who have been used to utilizing. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I, I thank the Opposition Leader and Shadow Minister of Finance for her question. Um, in regarding changes to payroll taxes as they happen, this problem does occur. This is the exact same problem that occurred under her administration or when the former government uh, made payroll tax changes, and it takes a little bit longer to update the system online. But what I can tell her about the impact on cash flow is that I think about three weeks ago in the Ministry of Finance, I reviewed the annual cash flow statement, and it looks like the numbers are getting better, Mr. Speaker. And so I do not believe that at this point in time we have managed to dig into or borrow any additional money because our cash flow is relatively positive, and I'll be happy to report up to the House when I intend to give a midterm update on our budget and our budget performance. Thank you, Premier. Would you like a supplementary? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm pleased to hear that we will have a, a midterm update because that would have been the, the last question that I had with respect to periodic updates, and I appreciate so, the, the Speaker's... So no question? No question. No question. Okay. We'll now move on to... Uh, not other member, another member, and Premier, there are eight members who actually put their name on the list today, and to recognize General Member Tyrrell. General Member Tyrrell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, all. Uh, as a result of my canvassing, uh, I would like the Honorable Premier to confirm to this Honorable House the number of students that have been benefited from additional financial assistance at the Bermuda College. Premier. Mr. Speaker, um, I thank the Honorable Member for his question. As Honorable Members will recall, uh, during our election campaign, we made a pledge to make sure that those persons that had financial need would be able to get the assistance. We heard from a number of scholarships which have been awarded by the Bermuda government from the Minister of Education earlier, and I'm pleased to announce that um, a grand total of 313 students benefited from the additional monies given to the Bermuda College. And that means that 313 students who would not have had the opportunity to have higher education under the former government got it under this government. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Uh, supplementary? I do, Mr. S uh, Mr. Speaker. And again, as a result of canvassing, can the Honorable uh, Premier advise, is it intended uh, to continue offering this financial assistance going forward? Mr. Premier? Uh, Mr. Speaker, what I can say to the Honorable Member is absolutely. If members will recall, the, the Ministry of Education received the largest increase of any government department, $5.3 million additional dollars to make sure that not only our students can have uh, the better education, but also to ensure that we're able to provide assistance to upgrade the skills of all of our people wherever they are, Mr. Speaker. It is important, and the way that we will build a better and fair Bermuda is to ensure that people have the access to higher education. This government is committed, and we are delivering. Thank you, Mr. Premier. The supplementary? You have a second supplementary, or you're fine? No? Okay. Um, beg your pardon? You can't answer supplementary if you didn't ask a question. So you want your question now? Yes. Okay. 
we we'll move on to a question from the uh, member Pantelin. You have the opportunity to put your question now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier uh, advise this Honourable House of the reason behind the purchase of the Victoria Hall uh, building by government, given that there are significant government properties that could have benefited from the infusion of the capital expenditure for rehabilitation of such no, buildings? It's is the uh, Mr. Premier? That was a no vote. No vote. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I can't confirm to the honorable member that the government has not purchased the Victoria Hall building, Mr. Speaker. Members, 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 let's, let's quiet dog. I need to hear, I need to hear the member. I need to hear what the member's asking. Remember, Mr. Speaker, would you like to put a supplementary? I have to ask it as a supplementary, but yes. I did mention the wrong building. It's the Park Place building. They, they, could, could you? Okay. Um. Ah! Minister? Minister? Sorry, Mr. Speaker, I, I had to ask it as a supplementary because I, I said Victoria Hall and I meant Park Place, the building that was recently indicated that the government will be purchasing. So my question is, is there any thought behind, is there any reason, strategy behind purchasing a new building for government when there are significant government properties that well, well you, you, you are straight a little bit more because your first question was towards the one Pacific building. So you right. indicated that you right. named so the said, wrong I building. Said it was the so wrong I'm going to allow you to act second, name the correct building. Right. Okay. Mr. Speaker, the rationale is very simple. First thing is that the government has rented significant space in that building for a while. The building came up for an offer for sale, and the Bermuda Housing Corporation, through the Ministry of Public Works, has acquired the building. In addition to that, there are a number of government entities that are in private accommodations, and if the government is paying rent to itself, as opposed to private accommodations, we will reduce the budget or be able to have more money to spend on the things that matter, Mr. Speaker. The Minister of Public Works has managed the estate well, and we look forward to not only inhabiting that building, but kidding out that building and the top floor with the Ministry of National Security to have a fintech co-working space to advance our fintech ambitions, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Any other member wish to? We recognize the Honorable Member Dunkley. You have your name on the list, so you can put your question. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and good morning to colleagues. Mr. Speaker, I think it was on May 31st, the Honorable Premier said in a um, comment on social media that he had attended a presentation by newly incorporated Bermuda company Arbitrate. He said in that message, the team demonstrated their cryptocurrency platform and explained plans to create more job opportunities. Question for the Honorable Premier, who made up the Arbitrate team that demonstrated their platform and who is the local contact? Thank you, Member. Premier? Um, Mr. Speaker, I cannot recall the names of the person who presented on that particular day. As the Honorable Premier will know, I'm sorry, the Honorable former Premier will know that on any I given day. I know we only have one Premier at a time. So that much I do know, Mr. Speaker. Up. And I'm happy that I'm over here and he's over there. But with all of that being said, Mr. Speaker, I'm quite certain that the Honorable Former Premier will know that we keep a number of engagements. But he would, if he would like to know the specific people who are at that meeting, I'm happy to let him know. Thank you. Supplementary? Yes, Mr. Speaker. I, I appreciate the Premier's commitment. I'm happy to help at any time. Uh, second and first supplementary uh, to the Honorable Premier, has the Premier met with anyone from Arbitrate since then? And if so, what dates and whom did he meet with? Premier? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I believe that I had a meeting with Arbitrate um, uh, at a point in time afterwards. Um, I know that, uh, that when we're at the consensus conference, there are some representatives for Arbitrate at the consensus conference. Um, I know that they had come to Bermuda afterwards, and I think that they were reviewed a following time. And at that point in time, I did meet uh, with these persons. Um, I cannot recall the names of the people, but I'm happy to supply the full names of the people to the honorable member afterwards, or Thank at you. a point in time in the future in a written thing, and I'll Thank get you. that list from my office. Thank you. You second supplementary? Yes. Thank you. And I thank the Honorable Premier for following up on that. I'll make a note. 
During a press conference recently, Arbitrate committed a $1 million donation, that's their words, which they said would be donated this past week in time. Question to the Honorable Minister, since we've heard about the refurbishment of the building, has it been paid or did government inform Arbitrate that government does not accept inducements or donations? Mr. Premier. M Mr. Speaker. Coming from a side that promised transparency but never delivered it, it is rich to hear the things from the former Premier. So let me walk the former Premier through what this government has done. This government, where they have said that they, the former government said they would deliver transparency, we said that we deliver it. When there were companies that came to us that said they would like to assist in the development of the Bermuda FinTech space, we said that we must set up a clear and transparent mechanism for that to happen. That clear and transparent mechanism came to this House. It was called the FinTech Development Fund. It was passed to the House. It was passed to the Senate. It was given royal assent by the government. And it is now currently being set up by the Ministry of Finance. When the donations are made, payable to the Accountant General to support the education, training, and development of our FinTech industry, I sincerely hope that that honorable member will thank the Progressive Labor Party government for providing employment opportunities to the people in constituency number 10 instead of trying to tear down the work that we are doing. Thank you, honorable member. Thank you, honorable member. Um, Ms. Berman, your name's not on the list, so you can remain in your seat. Thank you. Mr. Famous, your name is on the list. Would you like to put your question? Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Good morning, hosts, and good morning to the gallery and the listening public. Would the Honorable Premier please inform the Honorable House about the progress of Wi-Fi in our public schools? Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Yes. Thank you. I thank the Honorable Member for his question. And what I can uh, tell the Honorable Member is that it was a commitment that this government made to make sure that we upgrade the digital divide and how shameful it was that in a 2017, our primary schools did not have Wi-Fi. What I can inform the Honorable Member is promise made, promise kept. We have installed Wi-Fi in every single school in Bermuda. The equipment is there. It is being tested and it will be active by the time students come back to school. There are some problems in certain schools due to the fact that there is old wiring and certain things need to happen. However, Mr. Speaker, that equipment is there. What is more, Mr. Speaker, is due to this initiative, some of our good corporate partners, them maybe in the fintech industry or otherwise, have asked how they can help to provide more coverage to more schools so that more of our students can have access to technology so they can play a part in the world of the fintech future. Thank you, Premier. Honorable Member, supplementary, no supplementary, good. Anyone else like to speak? We have Mr. the Government Whip. Yes, your name is on the list. Would you like to put your question? Yes, I would. Just uh, with the Premier having talked about promises made, promises kept, will the Honorable Premier please confirm the funded positions filled at the Department of Public Transport from July 2017 to July 2018 that were vacant before that period? Premier? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Honorable Member for his question because as members will know that we have had a significant issue with our bus service. And part of that significant issue was due to underfunding of the former government, Mr. Speaker. And there were funded, they decided that they would put in a hiring freeze, and this hiring freeze led to the degradation of the service of which we've had. So, Mr. Speaker, what I can tell the honorable member is that there are 11 funded positions that have been filled at DPT over that period of time. And the decision of this government to unfreeze those fully funded positions to reverse the hiring freeze instituted by the One Bermuda Alliance administration has allowed the department to steadily fill sorely needed positions that have been necessary in repairing our bus fleet and getting it to a point of reliability. And the one thing that I can say, Mr. Speaker, is that I'm pleased to report that over the last week we have only had one bus cancellation. Premier, thank you. Uh, Honorable Mamma, you want supplementary? Yes, I do. I have a supplementary um, based off of the Premier talking about promises made, promises kept. And uh, if the Honorable Ma Premier could let this Honorable House know uh, what has been the response to the opening of the Land Title Registration Office. 
Well, you, you strayed a little bit. Your question originally was on, 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 on the bus department. Well, um, we try and keep it supplementary in tune with what the original question was. Oh, so, sorry, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Okay, uh, well, what I will, I was, sorry, I was doing the supplementary based off of the promises made, promises kept part of the, the response, because that's well, what we, well, well, I think you, uh, you were straying a little bit on that one. You straight, you straight, this, this, sorry, this is the want, first time, this is the first time, so I'm just getting used to it, so I, I, I ask for your indulgence on that one, um, as, as the, set, my if, other if, supplementary does. If you want, if you want to talk about, if you want to talk about how well the buses are running or something of that nature, or how well the system Service is fine, but you strayed a little too far on that one. Well, my supplementary would be uh, if we're going to talk about Department of uh, Public Transport. If we are given the bus situation and given that uh, prior to the PLP administration taking power, uh, we had a shortage of buses, are we going to be getting a? Uh, are we getting any new buses, or is there going to be any relief to the bus fleet? In, the, in additional buses. Thank you. That, that, that's in line. Thank you very much, Mr. Yes. Speaker. I thank the Honorable Member for his question. What I can tell the Honorable Member is, as I think I've informed the Honorable House before, that we did make approval for eight new buses with a $3 million investment. That's in addition to the four that are in order. A third arrived last week. Um, unfortunately, the bus that did arrive last week uh, did uh, have uh, some damage to its fuel system and surface ruts that must be addressed before the bus be put into place. The fourth bus, 1804, is at the German manufacturer's facility uh, where final inspections are being done to ensure that there is no repeat of the damage that happened to the third bus, Mr. Speaker. But this government will make the investments which are necessary because the people of this country rely on a, st on a stable public transport system, Mr. Speaker. And that means that we must invest in buses, that we must invest in ferries, but more than just investing, we have to make sure that we build a smarter transportation system to take advantage of the use of technology, and that is precisely what the government's green paper on transportation will do to present options to make sure that we can be more efficient for transportation in the future, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Premier. I recognize the Honorable Member from Con Constituency 2. Honorable Member Swan, yes, your name's on the list, so you can put your question now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning to you. Mr. Speaker, um, I ask this question of the Premier. Would the Honorable Premier confirm how many fintech companies have been incorporated in Bermuda? Mr. Speaker, I thank the Honorable Member for his question, and what I'll let the Honorable Member know that uh, there are a grand total of 19, that is one, nine fintech companies that have incorporated in Bermuda, Mr. Speaker, and a total of 24 others that have submitted their name reservations and are in the process of incorporation, Mr. Speaker. So that is 43 companies, Mr. Speaker. That is progress under the PLP government. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Is this a supplementary? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, would the Honorable Premier be, be in a position to share with us how many of those companies have been incorporated since uh, the PLP came into government in July of 2017? Mr. Speaker, I am happy to answer that question, and what I could tell the Honorable Member is that before the Progressive Labor Party came into office, there was one fintech company established in 2006. Since that point in time, Mr. Speaker, as you have heard, 19 complete, 24 more on the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there is one other name left, and that's Mr. Commissio. Mr. Commissio, would you like to put your question? Uh, I would, Mr. Speaker, with your indulgence. Uh, Mr. Yes. Speaker, I'm just a humble MP, and I don't have any question that deals with, with, with significant matters of state or national interest, just something that is of concern to my constituents. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, can the Premier provide the Honorable House with the status of the project located at Parsons Road, immediately east of Benton's Drive, that project consisting of the repainting of the sidewalk, which is well past its sell-by sell -by date, uh, along with the installation of 
a uh, warning light. A warning light. Uh, my residents have uh, waited patiently for at least 18 months for this particular project to be completed. Mr. Premier. Mr. Speaker, um, I thank the Honorable Member for his question uh, regarding his constituents um, in uh, Pembroke. And what I can inform the Honorable Member is that help is on the way because this Progressive Labor Party government takes uh, those uh, concerns seriously. And the Minister of Public Works has ordered a number of lights which have arrived on island. And there will be, Mr. Speaker, a total of 55 locations that will be repainted, relighted, and re-added, Mr. Speaker. That is one in St. David's, one in St. George's, five in Hamilton Parish, three in Smith's, five in Devonshire, six in Pembroke, five in Paget, three in Warwick, a grand total of, must be because he must be from that area, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> eight in Southampton, and two in Sands, Mr. Speaker. In addition to that, Mr. Speaker, those are existing locations where lights will be put and crosswalks will be repainted. But not only are we going to do what is existing, Mr. Speaker, but there are 60 new crosswalk locations that will be put in with warning lights. Bethel AME Church, Wellington Park, St. George's, Clearwater School at St. David's, Shelley Bay Park, John Smith Bay, Mullet Bay and Ferry Road, Victor Scott Primary and Glebe Road, Warwick Bowling Alley, Bostock Hill West, Modern Mart, West Pembroke Primary School on North Shore inside of my constituency. Thank you very much, Minister. Church of Christ West End, North Shore Road by Dub City and Cottage Lane in Hamilton Parish, Harrington Sound Road, Berry Hill Road Paget, and St. John's Road before Cemetery Road and after Arnold's Market, Mr. Speaker. That is the example of a government that is building a better and fairer Bermuda. That was perfect timing. The clock just ran out on us. So 30 minutes have expired on the inaugural Premier's question. I hope members found that to be very informative, and we look forward to becoming a regular, session, regular part of our monthly session. We'll now move on to the 60 minutes to, for the, the 60 minutes for the questions from the statements that were delivered this morning. And eight seems to be a magical number. We have eight members who have 